Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm back from Milan. I just got in a couple days ago. What an amazing experience. I plan on doing a live stream talking about all the fragrances that I discovered. I got 500,000 different discovery sets. It was an amazing time. I got to meet so many amazing people, but I am very, very happy to be back and filming in my normal setup. So I have a review for you guys today of a fragrance that I actually picked up, not at Exxons, but at Duty Free, because I'm not sure if it's just not available in America yet, or it's just really hard to find. But this is one that I smelled a couple months ago that I fell absolutely in love with. This is Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Beau Le Parfum. And I smelled this for the first time, like I said, a couple months ago when I was filming a video with a friend of mine, Nobleman Fragrances. I have the original OG here, the original Le Beau, which came out in 2019. And I wanted to do a side-by-side -side comparison because these fragrances, I guess they're both considered really good designer fragrances for the spring summertime. And I'm excited to share my thoughts with you guys. So let's get into it. So first I'm just going to spray them on my hand, get a little skin action, skin on skin action. So that's the EDT. And this is the Eau de Parfum Intense. The intense part is really important. <laughs> so I guess what is kind of the claim to fame with the EDT, the original Le Beau, is just that it's a really beautiful kind of fresh summer fragrance with some coconut. It's not a note that you typically find in men's designer fragrances. And I smelled this a couple times at the department store. I really like it a lot. I think it's a great option for men if you want something that's a little, little different, but still typically mass appealing and fresh. And I actually picked up a bottle for my brother for his birthday. So I know that he'll love it because he really likes those kind of fruity scents. Like his two top favorite fragrances ever is Light Blue Intense and God of Fire. So it's kind of like mushing the two together, I think. But yes, I mean, it's beautiful. It's a really nice fragrance, the EDT. It's pretty simple. It's not the most complex thing in the world, but I think that that works really well, especially in the warmer months. In the top, this just has some bergamot. And in the mid, there's some coconut. It's a very fresh coconut. It's not like a really thick and creamy coconut milk kind of vibe at all. It's very aromatic, very like bright and fresh. And in the base, there's some tonka beans. So some sweetness and a little bit of this kind of like slight dimension, I guess you could say. But overall, it's pretty one dimensional and just really likable. It's really nice. If you're wanting to try something a little different, that's not like your typical summer men's designer fragrance, I would definitely try this one. It's pretty easy to find, unlike the Le Parfum, which I'm gonna talk about next. You can find this in Macy's, basically anywhere, probably like Dillard's or something like that. Not Sephora or Ulta, because I've never seen this house there before. And also the price point is pretty good. I think you can get the smaller size bottle of this for like $90. It's like a steal for a designer fragrance because I was out buying designer fragrances the other day because I <laughs> decided that I wanna talk a little bit more about designers. I wanna do, like I just found myself going way too far in the niche direction. So I was like, well, I need to rein myself in. I'm still gonna talk about niche fragrances because that's just my overall preference for my nose, but I do wanna talk more about designer fragrances. So I went out and bought a ton. <laughs> so I'm gonna be talking about them. And wow, the prices of designer fragrances have gone absolutely wild. I spent like $700 on fragrances the other day and I didn't even get that many. It's unreal. Like the average price is like $100 thirty dollars like what and this bottle at least in the duty free was like ninety five dollars so not that bad and so now let's compare it Ooh, turn that ringer off girl so unprofessional now let's talk about the labo this came out in 2022 and this one was created by quentin beach quentin beach also worked on the original as well um, i think it was in collaboration with one other perfumer Wow, and I'll definitely say just spraying it, it's so much more dimensional and a lot creamier. It doesn't feel like really heavy, but it is definitely thicker. There's definitely more substance to this fragrance. And so the note listing of this is actually very interesting. So in the top, we have pineapple. That's kind of what everyone says when they smell this, is that it smells kind of like a pina colada, which I, I get, but there's so much more to this than just that. Oh, it's really good, guys. Oh, this is really good. And in the top in this, you also have some iris, which is really interesting to add to something like this. Like it just makes it so different, but it's not like a very lipsticky, iris at all. I wouldn't even say it's necessarily like a very green iris either, or like an iris butter, maybe slightly, maybe that's where some of the creaminess comes from. Adds this really interesting side to this fragrance. And then it also has some cypress and some ginger. I love fragrances with ginger. It just adds the most fun tropical kind of spice, like this zinginess, you know what I mean? And in the mid, this fragrance has that same coconut note. And in the base, there's some woodsy notes, some tonka beans, some sandalwood, some amber, and some amber 
would agree. So it also kind of adds this like oceanic kind of feel to it as well. Very tropical, very like vacation in a bottle. So to compare them, I'll smell it on skin now. There definitely is a difference between them, but you can definitely smell the original DNA in the Le Parfum. But oh, it's just so good. They're both so good. But this one is definitely, the EDT here is definitely more young, maybe more of like a daytime scent for the summer. It's just a little more casual. You know what I mean? It's just a little more one dimensional, just something that's easy to grab, to throw on whenever you're running out. But this one guys, the Le Parfum is just next level. And it really doesn't come across really heavy or cloying or anything like that. I've seen some people review it, but I, in my, like I've tested it over the last couple days since I've been back. I don't find that at all. And it's been freaking hot here in Miami the last couple days, but it's just, mm, mm. I don't even know what to say. This one is so, sexy so grown up so but still has that kind of fun playful dna but it's not like i was saying it's not like a really overly sweet cloying but there's definitely some weight there so i'm like like this is one that's going to last and in my testing that's what i've experienced as well is that it does project pretty good it's not like an absolute beast in projection but it does come out maybe like out to here maybe decent scent trail but it lasts a lot longer than the edt that's kind of what you would expect anyway right but i think that there's some more notes in this that really help with the longevity i say with this one i probably got like five hours on my skin four or five hours and with this one like six to eight so much better and i've seen a lot of people reviewing this say it's more like it's like a day and night version of the fragrance like this is a daytime summer daytime this is summer nights i could definitely see that as well like this would be really nice to wear like on vacation or in the summer going out to dinner but i would still wear it during the day too that's just me but yeah it was a really fun discovery for me i absolutely love the coconut notes in this and with the pineapple in the Le Parfum, I think that it does in the opening kind of create this like pina colada feel, but it doesn't last. Like the pineapple kind of evaporates and dies off like pretty quickly, but then you're just left with that beautiful dimension with the iris and the coconut and this like woodiness, but still very fresh. Like there's almost like this musky undertone to it as well that just makes it so incredibly sexy and different. Like I really love that about this, but I was really impressed by this when I smelled it. When I smelled it for the first time with Novamin, I really loved it as well, but smelling it again Again, at duty free I was just like wow this is a 10 out of 10 this is so good and I love that it performs really well too so that's great and I think that when you go outside in the heat it really will bloom and explode and just be an absolute beast for the summer so really great choice if you are going on vacation both of them are honestly it just depends on what you're looking for I would definitely recommend this one just because I think that the smell is better and it lasts longer so I think they're pretty close in price as well at least for me at duty free they were about the same price so I would definitely say try out the Le Parfum if you can find it it's amazing summer's coming up you definitely need to try this one Le Beau Le Parfum but the EDT is amazing as well so if you can't find this one the EDT is still really good too so yeah guys that's my side-by-side -side comparison of Jean Paul Gaultier's Le Beau and Lobo Le Parfum. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment below what you think about both of these fragrances, what you think about Jean-Paul Gaultier. What's your favorite from the house? I would love to know. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.